got the Admiral Bill Stubblefield wearing red today, baby. Red, red. It's a red letter day. And Maria Lawrence is wearing black. No, it's blue. It's navy. <laughs> navy blue. Navy blue. A dark navy blue. A Rob. dark navy blue. I'm going to go with black on this one, Bill. Whatever. Like What's your vote? <laughs> Whatever you want. <laughs> We're taking on the queen bee? No way. It's, okay, it's a dark queen. navy blue, Rob. All right. You buckled quick on that <laughs> I one. I buckled quick, yeah. You gave up the ship. First I, sign of a I, pirate flag. Years ago, I went face-to-face -face with swords drawn Maria, and I was walking the plank in short order. <laughs> so I, I don't even fight anymore. I just capitulate. No, that's a smart move, sir. You got to understand where those battles should be fought and when. Amen. In studio, the House Majority Leader, Delegate Eric Halsorder. E, how are you, man? I'm doing great. Doing real good today. And I enjoy listening to you guys every morning when I'm working. Thank you. Uh, I couldn't hear you Monday. I don't know what was going on Monday. So, uh, what I happened went to, Monday? Yeah, I don't know. I went to Facebook, couldn't find you. Went to my simple radio, couldn't hear. So I gave up on you on Monday. But oh. uh, listening yesterday. Did you capitulate faster than Stubblefield did right there? <laughs> do you have your sword out? Do you, are you ready oh, to no, take your own? No, no. But I enjoy listening to you guys every day, every well, morning. Well, I understand happy birthday is yes. uh, in order for Ooh. you today. Yeah, 56 years old today. Still so, a young man. I know. My mother called me this morning saying happy birthday. Uh, a buddy of mine called and saying happy birthday. So you, you know, nice. It's only appropriate that we sing happy birthday. Yes. And I will take the lead with my <laughs> wonderful melodious singing voice. <laughs> did you say odiferous or melodious? <laughs> or did, how did you Either one. Would play. I believe Alex Mooney's birthday is today, yeah. too. I can tell you someone else, uh, John Overton. John over here. Mark really? Wahlberg yes. on this uh, day. Yeah. Patrick Morrissey's wife, Denise Morrissey. I did not know that. Uh, my wife's ex husband. <laughs> We're not going to mention him, though. Yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah. Good fella. So. Uh, the revenue numbers for May were good once again. You've got one more month left in the fiscal year, yes. and you're already $700 million, uh, in surplus. $700 million to the good. So personal income tax, exceeded collections, consumer sales tax, exceeded collections, corporate net income tax, severance tax, all exceeded uh, collections for the month of uh, May. Uh, to the tune of uh, about $63 million to the good. So that brings us overall for the year, $701 million positive. So things Eric, are looking good. Eric, that's impressive. It uh, is. But if you look at other it's states. It's impressive also because it includes an income tax cut. It does, yeah. Uh, looking at other states, are other states saying the same exceeding uh, estimates? Or are we somewhat unique in this area? I haven't got a chance. You know, that's a great point. Yeah. I need to research that. But what I did for my little research last night, I wanted to go back to see a historical trend of where we've been when I got elected in 2010. Uh, so for the most part, in 2010, my first term would have been January of 2011. The um, let's talk about the rainy day fund. So currently, our rainy day fund, rainy day fund A and B, we're sitting at one billion two hundred thirty-four million dollars. Okay. And we were broken the other day. Yeah. yeah. Well, back in June 30th, 2011, mm -hmm. which would have been the end of that first session for me or that that quarter, your rainy day fund was six hundred and fifty-nine million. So over the last 14 years, we've been able to increase our rainy day fund to the tune of about almost a billion dollars. Okay, so we're sitting pretty good with the rainy day fund. Uh, our general revenue budget, our very first budget that I had a chance to vote on in March of uh, 2011, our general revenue budget was four billion, fourteen million, one hundred and twenty-one thousand. The budget that we just passed. Four billion nine hundred ninety-six million uh, five hundred ninety-eight thousand nine hundred thirty-two dollars. So that budget over fourteen years only grew nine hundred and eighty-two million. So about seventy million dollars a year. So I think that's a testimony to what we've been able to do to mm -hmm. keep our flatline budget, control our rate of spending. So and that's included what four pay raises or five? Uh, I think five. Five. Yeah. So so we've seen the budget grow about seventy million dollars a year. We've seen our savings, our rainy day fund, increase about seventy-three million dollars per year. So, so, what are you expecting for June? Typically, is that a uh, rather uh, generous month? I think so. You'll see probably around sixty, sixty-three million again. Uh, I'm back early on when we were talking about this. Uh, you had asked me what I projected that that this rain or that this uh, surplus would be at, and I figured around eight hundred million. And I mentioned that we needed to see a target of about sixty million dollars per year, or sixty dollars, uh, sixty million dollars per month, and that's about what we're hitting. So, and what does this do for the next possible trigger of an income tax reduction? 
So remember, the trigger is based off of spending and it's based off of inflation. So if the legislature is committed to spending five, no more than 5% per year, whatever the inflation rate is, you add that to the spending rate. So 5%, 4% inflation, you're at 9%. You have a 1% trigger for an income tax cut. So we should never see we should never see ourselves in the same position that Kansas was. Mm-hmm. So, when does this uh, get calculated and then implemented? Uh, around August. August is when they'll look at the uh, CPI numbers from July, and then January one is when it's actually uh, your income tax. They'll send out all the new tax tables to all the employers and so forth. So. Well, Eric, we've had this discussion yes. before, and I don't think anyone could question the success that you and Craig Blair and others have right. done. You set a flatline budget uh, as philosophy, as an uh, as a uh, operational approach a couple of years ago, right. and you've been very persistent in sticking with it. West Virginia has profited in so many ways from this. However, as you well know, there are certain programs that are not being met as, as what some of the proponents would suggest they would. Will there be a point in time that you think that the, uh, that the strict, strict adherence to the flatline budget will be relaxed somewhat? Well, two things could happen. Yeah. If, you, if you give up that, if you take the position that, hey, we do want to spend more in government spending, then you've got a decision to make. Do you want to allow the people, the citizens, to enjoy tax relief, or do you want more bloated, bigger government? And that's the decision that future legislatures are going to have to make. I mean, I've decided when I ran, one of the, my message when I ran was, I'm Eric Householder. I was running for House of Delegates because our state spending was out of control. I think what I just described to you today, I've been able to implement, and others have been able to implement, where we've controlled that rate of spending. We've actually increased the numbers much better for the state. I mean, for the last four or five years, you've seen over $2 billion in surpluses. I mean, unheard of. So, so Eric, the other thing that you mentioned is this rainy day fund, yes. which has increased and increased. When's the last time we had to tap into the rainy day fund, and what generally is that used for? So every year the governor taps into the rainy day okay. fund. And we always tap into the rainy day fund at the beginning of the fiscal year. Mm-hmm. The governor needs working capital, cash on hand. Okay. So right around $60 million per year. Um, you'll see the governor tapping into the rainy day fund July 1. So, and then that's usually paid off within one or two months. Okay. So, yeah. The last time that we actually tapped into the rainy day fund was about $120 million. I believe it would have been around the year 2012 or 13. Uh, It might've been 13 because Tomlin would have been the acting governor. Mm -hmm. And I believe Tim Miley was our house uh, speaker at the time. And in order to balance the budget, we uh, drew from the rainy day fund of about 120 million dollars eric there's there's bloated government which i don't think anybody wants yes except for those who got the job i I guess to to help for the bloating uh and then there's uh a reimbursement rate complaints Mm -hmm. that a lot of health care providers in this area right have right Uh, we interviewed a couple before who do physical therapy for very young children and they haven't had a rate reimbursement increase in 20 something years i think i think they said and it's becoming almost impossible to get young people out of college to go into this field so you're running the danger of aging out those who provide that service with nobody coming in underneath them to continue it and they have not gotten a reimbursement increase while gasoline prices have doubled food prices have tripled and these folks are still working for the same amount of money they were working for 20 years ago when they took right, the job. Right. What can you do about that before you leave office, if anything? Well, you're seeing, you're, you're hearing that more and more about this issue. Uh, back in, let's see, it would have been probably two years ago, the governor, maybe three years ago. Oh, well, time escapes me the uh, older that you get. But uh, the, the at, governor decided. At 56? <laughs> <laughs> Bill's got <laughs> shoes older than you. <laughs> Come true, on, Eric. True. So, uh, so the governor d- decided to expand the IDD waiver program, okay, when probably the decision should have been to increase the provider rates. And that was a decision that was made. Uh, I think you're hearing more and more about the situation. You're going to see more you're going to see provider rates slowly start to come up because they're going to have to. You're right. They're going to have to. If not, you know, what's the alternative? So, 
When do you guys go back again? August 25th through the 27th is our next interim. But some of the other areas uh, that we hear mentioned that was some concern would be the deferred maintenance for our universities and our public buildings. Also, the uh, uh, child protective services, uh, monies for that. Our teachers, even though we've given pay raises to our teachers, mm -hmm. uh, compared to adjacent states, they are far, far less than what adjacent states have. How would these areas be specifically addressed? Well, we'll remember, we're working as fast as we can, yeah, but yeah. remember, government sometimes works at mm -hmm. snail's pace. Yeah. I mean, these issues, we're bombarded with all these issues. Deferred maintenance, we've been doing a great job uh, with higher ed. I mean, this not this past budget, we uh, put in $20 million mm -hmm. per, per um, college yes. to help defer in their deferred maintenance cost. It's one of the things that I spearheaded. Uh, as your finance chairman and as the majority leader, I think higher ed's very, very important. I had met with uh, the president of Shepherd, and mm -hmm. she had told me, hey, look, we're, we're seeing about $23 million per year sure. for maintenance costs. Yeah. Um, no, these are just challenges that yeah. we're trying to fix and as fast as we can. The biggest challenge, when, we, when Republicans took over in uh, 2014, our first session 2015, we heard about this thing called PEIA, that there was a problem with PEIA. None of us knew about it, um, but we slowly yeah, have yeah, been trying sure, to tackle yeah. the PEIA program. We didn't know that it was in default and how they've been spending money through the back door and everything else, so it just takes time. So, Eric, how sort are you will finish serving out your uh, final term, December 31st, I presume. Is that what January it is? January 8th is my last day. So January sayonara. 8th. I think that's Elvis's birthday, too. Probably. Oh, really? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Has anyone told you how you could have about, uh, possibly have four governors? Have four governors, four yeah. Governors? Now, how does that work? Well, if uh, uh, current governor of justice, if he... Jim's as big as four governors. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. If he, uh, if he gets inaugurated in the U.S. Senate seat on January 3rd, you would have a acting governor from january 3rd through january the 8th would that be craig blair that would be craig blair and then on january the 8th when the senate elects a new senate president you would have an acting governor from january 8th until january 13th and that would be the new senate president that would be the new senate president and then your new governor would take the inauguration on january 13th patrick morrissey so four governors in 10 days <laughs> yes yes it's kind of weird isn't it that's a very interesting <laughs> it is um, it is interesting it, sort of it, it actually, scenario it's actually going to happen too it may or may not so well when it depends on if uh, governor justice takes his inauguration on january the third does I he have see. a choice i don't know so yeah. but uh there's, definitely there's interesting. A there's a jock in between uh new come new senators yes, of yes. when they want to be an augur because they want that uh be first in line with seniority so right. there will be some right. jockeying so. right so what's next for eric householder what is next for me uh work family and just church i enjoy all three of the above and uh get, i get to spend more time with the grandsons in fact i'm going to a basketball game tonight and uh, see my grandson play in the Martinsburg Rec League. Yeah. So I enjoy that kind of stuff. Um, and work is your HVAC business that work you retired HV from. I, I you're, work. The, you're the busiest retired from it <laughs> business know. ever. I well, I enjoy doing service work, too. And now what I enjoy most about it, you know, I'm usually out by myself. And, uh, I mean, I can't get in an argument except with myself. I was going to say, nobody <laughs> tells you what to do. That's you don't right. tell anybody else That's what right. to do. There That's you right. Go. The only thing i got to worry about are bees and snakes, you know, <laughs> okay. around the outdoor units. Uh, but, no. Uh, I had mentioned to you when, you when I called in after the election, you know, I think this is not the end, but just the beginning. There's always opportunities. And um, we'll see what two years or maybe one year. We'll see. Eric, lose an election – hurts i it don't does. care how much you've uh, you prepare yourself for it it hurts in your case i suspect even more so because i was of the opinion you're going to win right. handily but i do not have a gauge in the southern part of the state you handled the the defeat as gracious as anybody i've ever seen so my Thank hat's you. off to you 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 showed it as a true gentleman yeah nobody wants to lose trust mm -hmm. me uh, but uh, no i worked very very hard I, I i put a lot of miles on my car and i, and I went to so many lincoln dinners throughout mm -hmm. the state and i worked southern west virginia pretty hard yeah. uh, disappointed very yeah. disappointed yeah. some of the areas that i spent a lot of money in the performance just wasn't there uh, the whole entire eastern panhandle, uh, Potomac Islands, I did very, very well. Actually, I did outperform Patrick Morrissey in uh, Berkeley 
and Morgan and Hampshire. Mm-hmm. So, but those counties, you know, throughout the Potomac Highlands, I did very, very well. Very, very thankful. But a lot of the direct digital mail that I was doing, electronic digital mail, it just seemed like the whole western part of West Virginia and the whole south eastern part, it was like the digital was ineffective for whatever reason. I don't know if it's poor inter- internet connectivity issues or what. Well, and turnout, um, turnout. You know, we've certainly talked a lot about that here. Just the whole, you know, not, again, not a super duper surprise, but yet, right. you know, I, you just want to say, come on, people, Something get out else there. That was, uh, I was in 40 statewide newspapers for over six weeks, uh, several radio stations across the state. And, uh, yeah, so you can, prime example, you can work very, very yeah, hard thanks, and spend money and still lose. Yeah. yeah. How much uh, do you think voting around the state is still a zip code uh, vote? Geography killed me down southern West yeah. Virginia. I mean, they just voted with the Kanawha County. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's the same way with the Eastern Panhandle, Northern Panhandle. We stick together, so to speak. So, a question the world wants to know: Of the Lincoln dinners, you said you went yeah. to fifty Lincoln dinners. Which well, I didn't one, go quite to fifty okay. of them, but went to several. Yeah. Uh, which was the best? And oh, they which were was the worst? <laughs> oh, shoot, I don't know if there were any worse. Oh, all those chicken dinners. They uh, were they all chicken? <laughs> yes, <laughs> chicken and steak. Uh, uh, Tempers got up at Hampshire County yeah. uh, with uh, between Ooh. Riley Moore and his uh, opponent Mookie Walker. Yeah. I remember that vividly because I'd brought my wife and my parents to that yeah. was their first uh, campaign event. My wife hates politics anyway, so she hates to be around that kind of stuff. So uh, that was uh, kind of uh, ironic that something like that would happen where they actually got into a shouting match. But actually, uh, I was talking about the quality of the meal. But I, <laughs> oh, oh, but oh, I enjoy, sorry. I enjoy yeah. the direction you're going. This um, is much more interesting. So. I mean, they, they're all. Not, I, I enjoyed meeting people. I enjoy talking with people, and that's why my wife hates politics mm-hmm. because she's like. I'm sitting there by myself. You're out talking to everybody, but I just enjoy talking yeah. to people, walking up, introducing myself. Well, you got to bring a plus two when you go. What's that? You have to bring a plus two, somebody yeah. for your wife to hang yeah, out yes. with, and then yeah. you. Yeah, but she got into the end of, or towards the end of it, she started getting in, into it. And uh, but no, um, the the first votes that were released are usually the early votes, and I was on top. And I thought, well, this is kind of early. And then as the other votes started coming in, I could see the trends, and I was like, oh. I was going to say, at what yeah. point during the evening did you recognize how quick uh, did you say, mm, boy? Yeah, well, when you start seeing 30% of the votes in, and, you know, what's funny is I was watching three different sites, and it seemed like the Metro News sites w- w- was faster much. Than, much faster than what the Secretary of State's site. Yeah. At one moment, I looked. I was uh, down 12,000. I hit refresh. I was down 8,000. Seconds later, hit refresh. I'm back 13,000 down. You know what I mean? Right. Just in- instantaneously. So when you start seeing those trends, then you know that, hey, you're not going to have a good night. And I went to bed, I think, around 11 o'clock. Did Trisha Jackson's presence on the ballot hurt your cause, or was she getting her votes from an entirely different No, I think it hurt my cause, and so did Caleb Hanna. I mean, each one of those, Trisha got a, received around 37,000 votes. Uh, Caleb Hanna received 30,000 votes, 30,000 votes. So, And you lost by how many? I lost right around 25, to almost 26,000. So, so either one of those two yes. would have made the difference. Yeah, and that's the problem with a four-member race. It's just a race for name ID. That's all it's about. Popularity so. contest. Yes. yes. Recognition. Thought, Neil, not popular. Uh, Neil Kane. Okay. In the, Nate Kane. Nate, Nate Kane, I'm sorry, yeah. in the congressional race. I thought he overperformed uh, what I was expecting him to do numbers-wise. In okay. fact, that whole race for Congress really collapsed – uh, the numbers. If you remember, Riley in the beginning was like at 90. Remind me of George Bush after the Gulf War, like 91%. And obviously, when you're that high, you got nowhere to go but and down. remember, there was only about 102,000 votes that were cast. Mm-hmm. So in the governor's race, what was disheartening for me, the governor's race, you had 224,000 votes cast. The next uh, race on the ballot is the Secretary of State's. Uh, 21,000 people decided, eh, I'm going to skip over it. The next one on the ballot is the auditor's race. 35,000 people, eh, I'm going to skip over that, you know, for whatever reason. So it happens. Would those 35,000 all had voted for me? Who knows? Who knows? Will you be a part of the Morrissey cabinet going forward? Well, I would like to uh, maybe do something with uh, Patrick Morrissey. It would be a a great honor to continue to serve. And I think with my expertise, uh, there's plenty to do in Charleston. 
uh, some of the issues that you brought up, Bill. But, uh, you know, these agencies, obviously, they need great leadership. So, hey, if uh, if the call's there, we'll, we'll see. When do those conversations usually happen? Uh, I would say a lot of those conversations will happen right after the election because there has to be a transition team, you know, put in place and, and you know. In West Virginia, obviously, it's such a deeply red state now. It's presumed that for most races, if there's a Republican and a Democrat, uh, the Republican's going to win. Yes. Uh, yes. Obviously, as a politician, you can't assume anything. But is that right. the way you read the state as well these oh, days? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the unknown right now, but you've heard, and I've listened to your station several times, what will Joe Manchin do? I mean, he has said several times that he's not running for governor. I, I mean, I'm taking him at his word. He said he's not going to run for U.S. Senate. Obviously, his um, – or the gentleman from Wheeling, I can't – his name excuse me. He's running for U.S. Senate. Glenn Elliott? Yes, Glenn Elliott. Uh, he mentioned – and I've read in the newspapers where he's had a conversation with uh, Senator Manchin, and Manchin told him he was not going to run for U.S. Senate. So who knows? The governor uh, question was raised, and Joe had a qualifier on that. I don't know if it's Joe's quote or a quote associated with him, which is that – I'm not going to run provided Steve Williams can raise money. And that's an interesting hook yes. to leave out there. That's yes. a pretty big matzo ball hanging over the entire equation. And let me tell you, it's very, very difficult to raise money. I mean, I basically was begging people, having fundraisers. You know, you just got to keep working the crowd. It's very hard to raise money. And we're all vying for X amount of dollars. But supposedly Manchin comes in with a large campaign yes. war chest. Yes. So uh, if uh, Williams cannot raise money, right. then Manchin has this He has the advantage. Yeah. Right. And it just seems, but, again, without but, so just being... Just quick, Maria, but sure, Steve, Steve you, you, just a second. Steve said he will not drop out of the race even if exactly. Joe gets yeah. in it. Good, yeah. Maria. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, the conspiracy theorist in me says... Come on, Joe. What are you doing here? Right, right. The timing. You know, we had the him on this show. Yeah. yeah, we had him on this show. He, you know, sort of waffled a little bit about what I'm going to do, and then three days later, you know, said what he was going to do, sort of, kind of. Um, so I'm just suspect. Yeah, I think you're still going to see him work with that new party labels, that group, and or whatever, and continue mm -hmm. that that mantra. So. Uh, but not as a candidate. You don't think that, do you? Possibly as a candidate. I really don't know. But it's getting awfully late. It is getting that. awfully late, yes. I thought that, so. that particular ship has sailed. There may I, be other I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. The yeah. president of uh, West Virginia University Post is soon to be available, and there's right. been so many names thrown about with so that, including we asked him, Senator Manchin. Yeah. Right. Roger yes. Hanshaw's name has I, been tossed out there. I was listening to your old show when, when you guys asked. So, yes, I mean, I've been hearing the same rumors for the last four or five years you know with speaker Hanshaw's name and, and so forth and so and others so yes so who knows uh we're just about out of time eric you mentioned speaker Hanshaw yes. here and i know you've known him for the time that he's been in office which Absolutely. has overlapped with yours obviously and he's gotten so much praise for his skills as a, an attorney as a uh, valedic I'm, I'm, I'm sorry not valedictorian parliamentarian, parliamentarian yeah. thank you big difference between those two yeah. jobs he might have been <laughs> he, he probably was <laughs> yeah and and the way uh he has conducted business your thoughts on speaker hanshaw and his uh, future going forward i love him to death great man uh, great family man very fair in fact there was three of us uh, back and keep in mind he's your longest serving republican speaker in the history mm -hmm. so keep that in mind uh okay there hasn't been a lot to be with <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> longest serving republican speaker uh there was three of us that helped get him elected uh back when there was a race between him and former house uh finance chair eric nelson and now of course senator nelson is on the senate side uh but uh no i'd do anything for the man very fair always treated me very well and a uh, great person to be around. How yeah. do you think the dynamics will play out for election of the, of the chair? I think he'll still prevail. There's there's enough common sense conservatives that are down there that says, hey, look, we've got to reach compromise. You, I mean, you can go down and throw bombs all day long, but you're not going to be effective. I mean, it didn't take me very long to realize that. When I, for, yeah. we all, when, when you get elected, you think you're going to run down there and change everything. And then it doesn't take you very long to say, hey, no, I've got to work within the confines of, you know, group setting, uh, you know, with members. And, uh, yeah, you just got to learn to compromise and get what you want. Yeah. So it takes a while. I mean, it took over five years just to get personal income tax re yeah. uh, reform. So you're not well. done yet. You have a half a year to go. But uh, sum up the Eric Householder tenure in Charleston. Well, my tenure was, uh, man, a lot of tax cuts. 
you know, a lot of tax cuts. And that's something that I'm very proud about, a repeal prevailing wage, a right to work. I, I tell people I probably could have quit three years ago and been very satisfied. Uh, we've done so much over the last, my 14 years that, uh, you know, the personal income tax was a big uh, momentous occasion for me because I, ne I got to the point where after five years I started to think that Republicans would never cut taxes. <laughs> so, and then all of a sudden, boom, it happened. And uh, it, was so, it was such a joyful day that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll remember that day for the rest of my life. So we'll see. What do you have to get done between now and December 31st? Uh, just spend money. <laughs> that just sounds the opposite of what you just said. Brother. I know, I know, and I, and I jokingly said that because, yeah, but, yeah. but there's some speculation that's exactly what's going to happen. In there the will be, and, and and you know, this uh, last special session, I did vote against a couple things. Yeah. You know, so I did test out my red button. It does work. Yeah. So, so yeah. So hey, thanks for coming in, man. Yeah, anytime. I just enjoy this. You're, you're going to be free pretty soon. I know. I know. I have to come in on the Friday show. Oh, you know I was going to say yeah. he yeah, can yeah. be a guest. Yeah. He he can yeah. bump me. Or there goes my job. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mr. Stubblefield. Happy birthday. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. That is Leader Householder at uh, 903.